take a look at the transmission that would go into this 1929 Model A Ford. I've actually got one inside here on the bench that we can take a look at. This non-synchronized transmission was initially developed in 1927, put into use in 28. Everything inside the transmission fits into this nice, tidy 6x6 box. Just to orient you to the basics, we've got the input shaft here, which splines to a clutch disc that's pressed up against the flywheel by the pressure plate. You've got your throw-out bearing there. I've got this connected to a drill so that we can see how it works. We're going to go through each of the gear configurations. You can see the output shaft here. That would connect to the universal joint, then to the drive shaft, out to the differential, and to the wheels. So this input shaft would spline to the clutch disc. So let's take a look at how that would happen. You see a typical engine here that this would mate with and go around to the back and you see that spline on the clutch disc the pressure plate fingers so that is how the transmission connects to the engine so let's jump in and see how this works actually before jumping into the transmission let's take a look at the shifting tower that fits on top of it and that would include the gear shift lever here and that gear shift lever comes down to this point and when you move the gear shift lever, all you're really doing is moving these two shifting forks back and forth into their different positions. So they would slide on these shift rails. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that would fit. As I position this shifting tower over the transmission, you can see those forks mating with two slots inside of the sliding gears. So as I assemble this, put the six bolts in, that is how it looks. So when you move the gear shift lever, you're simply moving those two forks back and forth, which would move those two sliding gears. So let's take a look at how that would work. Again, those two forks are going to go into these two slots. These two sliding gears is all that move when you shift the transmission. They will go into different configurations for neutral, first, second, third, and reverse. Now let's take a look at some of the components of the transmission so that we can see how it works. Now you first of all see the input drive shaft here. That is connected to the input drive gear. And when I run the drill you can see that that turns. You probably also notice that there appears to be a shaft all the way along the top of this. Actually Half of that is the output shaft. You can see that it's broken there. There's also another shaft down below that we're going to discuss. The shaft down below is actually the cluster gear, and it spans this entire width of the transmission. And you will see that when I start the drill. It's down below this top shaft. The cluster gear actually contains four gears all clustered together on one shaft. They all move when the input shaft turns because it mates with the input shaft drive gear down to the cluster gear and all four of those gears turn plus there's a fifth gear in the back that we'll talk about a little bit. We looked at the two slider gears earlier. The larger one is used to shift into first and reverse. The smaller one is used to shift into second and third. The cluster gear down at the bottom that has the four gears actually has a reverse drive gear here at the left and then a reverse idler gear up here. And so you can see those turning when I start the transmission. So those gears will turn even when going down the road at full speed. But nothing is meshed to them so they won't be used. So in the neutral position, the two slider gears are positioned like this. Neither one are meshed with the cluster gear at the bottom. So the output shaft is disconnected from the input shaft. And when I run the drill, you can see that the output shaft does not turn. So for first gear, the shifting fork will slide this large sliding gear into position so that it meshes with the cluster gear at the bottom. So you now have power coming in from the input drive shaft to the input drive gear down to the cluster gear, across to the small cluster drive gear, up to the large slider gear, which is meshed to the output shaft. So that's the first gear, gear reduction. You can see the output shaft turning pretty slow. For second gear, 
the shifting fork will move the large slider gear aside. You then move the small slider gear so that it meshes with the cluster gear at the bottom. Again, you have power coming in from the input drive shaft into the input drive gear, down to the cluster gear, across to the large cluster drive gear, up to the small slider gear, which is also splined to the output shaft. So this is another gear reduction, and you can see the output shaft here. A little bit faster. For third gear, the large sliding gear stays where it's at, and the smaller slider gear moves till it meshes to the input drive gear. That connects the output drive shaft to the input. So there's no gear reduction. You have a straight shot from input to output. You can see the output drive shaft is quite a bit faster. So that's third gear. So reverse, we slide the smaller sliding gear so that it's no longer meshed with anything. Move this larger sliding gear over until it meshes with the reverse idler gear that is meshed to the cluster gear. So now you have an odd number of gears, so it turns in reverse. You can see that happening here. And then see the output. Also a gear reduction. And that's reverse. So that's how a 1928 Model A forward transmission works. And one of the things you may have seen when downshifting the Model A transmission is significant gear clash. And the reason for that is that the input drive gears have to match the speed of the output drive gears or else they will clash. And so those who are new to shifting a Model A transmission will see a significant challenge in downshifting and may even need to double clutch from time to time. So hopefully this video has helped.